right, everybody, we're going to talk here about aortic disease. There's two of them that we're going to talk about, and they come up commonly, and both of these are emergencies. So that is why they commonly come up. Like I said in the angina video, if you don't know how to work up chest pain, you do not belong in a white coat. So that is why this commonly gets tested on CCS, and I got a question on one of these diseases on my CCS. And so you'll want to be aware of how to work these up without having to think about multiple choice. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. I appreciate it. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications as I put more and more videos up. This is the aorta, okay? Big vessel, largest artery in your body, comes right off of the left ventricle. Uh, bear in mind um, that you have the aortic valve right here that's going to come into play. Um, you have an ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and then a descending aorta, and then once it passes the diaphragm, roughly at the level of the 12th rib, it then becomes the abdominal aorta, which supplies a lot of the gut and the retroperitoneum, okay? Um, then you get a bifurcation where it becomes common iliac, and then at that point, you go off to the lower extremities. And I just want to point out here, A, B, C, S. So A, B, C, S, the arch of the aorta gives off brachiocephalic, which supplies the right common carotid and the right subclavian. And then you have uh, C for left common carotid and S for left subclavian. All right, we're going to talk about dissection and AAA. So aortic dissections due to a tear in the intimal layer, which allows blood then to burrow underneath. And the problem is that two layers are weaker than three. So if you have blood and only two layers... Uh, to keep it in, well, you're going to be more likely to develop an aneurysm that way. And what do aneurysms do? They rupture, okay? So watch out for that. This is why this is really important to get ahead of. Now, you can also get hemopericardium. And the reason is because all of this is contiguous with the pericardial space. So you can get blood that will then collect um, in the pericardial space and can cause a tamponade. Now, it's, this is, like I said, it's a medical emergency. It's often described as sharp, severe tearing or ripping pain, and it radiates to the back. So you want to know chest pain that radiates to the back. Got to think of aortic dissection. These patients are going out for CT angiogram. CT angiogram is the best initial test for aortic dissection. A lot of people think chest x-ray. Chest x-ray is okay if it's an emergency and you have a portable chest x-ray, but ideally we should do a CT angiogram. It is much more sensitive and specific. Now, a few things that you can notice on physical exam that are hints. Left and right blood pressure differential. Why? Well, if we go back here, let's say you have aneurysm right here. Well, that's going to affect the blood pressure here versus here. And so you'll have a difference in the blood pressure in the right arm versus the left arm. So if you have a systolic difference of more than 20 millimeters of mercury, that is suspicious. A pulse deficit, same idea here. What does this sound like? It sounds like Takayasu arteritis. Totally different pathophysiology, but similar finding for the similar for similar anatomic reasons. You may appreciate a diastolic murmur, which suggests aortic valve regurgitation. And then another thing that you can see is something that's commonly described as a wide bounding pulse with a wide pulse pressure. So something like 180 over 90 or something like that, where you have this wide pulse pressure. That is classic for aortic regurgitation, which commonly happens in aortic dissection. Number one risk factor here is hypertension. It's also associated with connective tissue disorders. You got a tall, lanky guy with long fingers coming in uh, with chest pain that radiates to the back. He's probably got Marfan's and a secondary aortic dissection. I wouldn't expect that to come up on the exam, but bear in mind. And then trauma and pregnancy. This is the DeBakey and Stanford classifications of aortic aneurysm. I'm sorry, of uh, aortic dissection. And uh, what you see here, I use DeBakey because it's more descriptive. So DeBakey 1 involves both the ascending and descending aorta. Debakey 2, only the ascending, and Debakey 3, only the descending. 
What do we do for workup? Well, CT angiogram. What else? EKG and cardiac enzymes. Why? This person's got chest pain. Anyone with chest pain, EKG, cardiac enzymes. No matter their age, no matter how severe it is, always, always, always. It's cheap. You can rule out a heart attack. If you don't do that, you will get sued. Uh, D-dimer, CBC, BMP. And then these are your surgical labs, PT, PTT, and type and cross match. Your surgeon will be happy if those are done before they come down to wheel these patients into the OR. And basically what you'll see on CT angiogram is a widened mediastinum. Uh, you'll also see uh, the, um, you can see where it's at. And so that will help you. Uh, again, it's something your surgeon is going to want to know ahead of time. Everything else, though, should be normal. So here's your aortic, aortic dissection here. You can see that tiny little flap. It's a little more apparent here. And this is nothing. This is just an artery coming off. Okay, these patients are going to be admitted to the ICU. They're going to be put on telemetry. Um, you want to manage both their pain and their hypertension. So beta blocker and morphine. Um, these patients, you need to put the order in for NPO because they're going to be getting surgery. And then, of course, consult surgery. Okay, AAA is uh, where you get an aneurysm of the abdominal aorta. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's in the name. Um, so if it's five to seven centimeters, there's about a 10% risk. If it's more than seven centimeters, there's a one in three annual risk. So this gets worse, the bigger it gets. The primary risk factor is smoking. Keep that in mind. That gets asked, um, what's the best thing? What's the number one thing this patient can do to reduce their risk? That is so classic on step three. I can't stress that enough. Other things, age, being male, COPD, hypertension. Usually it's asymptomatic, but sometimes you might get things like early satiety, nausea, and vomiting, but those are nonspecific. Classically on your exam, they'll tell you a palpable pulsatile abdominal mass. The problem with that is that that's something you can appreciate in a young person, I'm sorry, in a thin person, but this country, one in three people are overweight or obese. So you got a patient that's five foot nine and 250 pounds, you ain't gonna be feeling their abdominal aorta at all. The primary complication here is rupture. We'll talk about that in the next slide. Best initial diagnostic step is an abdominal ultrasound. It is very sensitive and specific. You can do it very easily. Just make sure you know how to do it because it is um, operator dependent. Okay, so this is a good normal uh, abdominal aortic ultrasound. And what you see here is the vertebral body, right? Where's the aorta? It's this one here. This is the aorta. Uh, arteries tend to be circular and um, very round, <laughs> if you will. What's this here to the patient's right? This is IVC. Notice how this is a little bit more compressible, a little more ovular. That's pretty normal for veins. And then this here, esophagus. Oh, look, <laughs> I already put it on here. Okay, well, now you see it in printed form. Okay, so here's another one. Kind of hard to see the esophagus here, but the esophagus can kind of collapse. Okay, this is a saccular aneurysm. So saccular aneurysms are um, kind of little berry-like outpouchings. Um, so you would want to measure this from here to here to get your uh, to get your uh, your measurement. Now um, you can also see it like this and. You will want to make sure that you're looking at the nice thick wall here because that is your aorta. This is not aorta here. This is your aneurysm. So again, measure the widest dimension. Okay. So how do you manage this? Depends on two things, symptomaticity and size. If it is symptomatic, surgical repair. If it's asymptomatic, then we question size. Now, on your exam, you because there's disagreement, you'll either be told a small aneurysm or a big one. So something like three and a half centimeters or seven centimeters. But the cutoff point is usually five and a half in men and five in women. So it's more than five and a half in men or more than five in women, surgical repair. If it's less than that, then we do medical management. Um, so what do we do? Beta blocker to reduce blood pressure. Stop smoking, number one thing you can do. And then monitor. If it's three to four, it's every three years. So in the threes, three years. In the fours, every year. 
uh, five to 5.4 uh, every six months, but five in women, we go to surgery. Society for Vascular Surgery recommends a one-time ultrasound screen. Adults over 75 who have a history of tobacco use. That's a one-time deal. Now, a ruptured AAA, look for the triad of hypotension, back pain, and abdominal mass, um, but that's only half of patients. So if you've got an elderly person coming in with unexplained hypotension or loss of consciousness, this is something you need to think of. If they're unstable, go for abdominal ultrasound. If they are stable, CT abdomen with contrast. Management here, if it's confirmed, uh, ruptured AAA, which is very easy to detect, on definitely on CT abdomen. You want to get fluids into them, CBC, BMP, um, do your surgical labs and consult vascular surgery for emergent repair.